Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. And welcome to AmeriCorps' very first roundtable for veteran and military serving organizations. My name is Mary Tobin, and I'm the proud senior advisor for Wounded Warrior Veteran and Military Family Initiatives here at AmeriCorps. Right now, there are over 100 of you and counting who either are in this community serving veterans and their families right now, you are a veteran or a military adjacent, meaning you're a part of the community and you're working to make the world a better place right now, or you are here because you want to find out who AmeriCorps is and why you should partner with us. And that's what you're going to find out here today. We are joined by some incredible partners from the Department of VA. We're joined um, by our incredible partner and leader who's the Director of Veterans Engagement at the White House. Um, we're also joined, and these are our honored guests today, those who are currently AmeriCorps grantees and working to serve veterans every day. And I am honored that our amazing CEO, Michael Smith, um, will be giving remarks right after I stop talking. But I, I wanna get right to it. Who and what is AmeriCorps? AmeriCorps is the only federal agency devoted to national service and volunteerism. And as a combat veteran, a former nonprofit executive director, and now a political appointee in the Biden-Harris administration, I don't think that there's another agency that is more perfect for kind of the, inter the trajectory and the intersection of my life. And so I'm not here because this is just my job. I'm here because this is an agency that I believe in. And I, and I think talking to this particular community, it's so important um, that we are doing things that we believe in, things that we believe make the country better. And that's why I want to welcome you all to the AmeriCorps family. You don't have a choice. You joined in this webinar, now you're a family. Um, I'll send you a coin or a flag or something a little bit later, but now you're part of the family and I'm so glad that you are here today. So also today during this webinar, um, you'll figure out or you'll learn more about how we work in the veteran and military serving community, uh, which is why we're so honored to have grantees who are doing the work right now. Um, you'll also learn how you can become a partner right now and you'll have some calls to action, some things that you can get involved in today. Um, what's so great about the way this webinar is also uh, framed today is that the majority of the time at the end is nothing but Q&A. So as you hear presenters and speakers, I encourage you to put your questions in the Q&A box, to type them in the chat. We'll be, we'll be uh, tracking them. But also, if you just want to write them down on the side, you have plenty of opportunity to raise your hand, come off of mute, and ask us directly what it is we do and how you can get involved. I am so honored that each, each and every one of you are here. Um, but I do want to, I want to call out uh, one of the particular speakers that you were here today. So I'm going to encourage you to stay as long as possible. We have one of our partners um, from, from VetCorps and, and they're from the state of Washington. And you will get a chance to hear all the different ways that they partnered with AmeriCorps over the last 10 years to serve veterans who need it the most. Um, and if you know anything about AmeriCorps and veterans and military family members, we care most importantly about ensuring that veterans and their families have a way to access the resources that they need the most, to transition back into the community in a healthy way and productive way, and to continue our service to this country. As the young folks say, we're not new to this, we're true to this. And so I am really, really happy to be finally engaging with this incredible community, building this database, getting the information out to you over and over and over again, and finding ways to partner with you to support the work that you already do. Um, so I, I think that's my formal portion um, of the presentation. And I, and I almost wanna unbutton the top button as my granny would say, Mary, stop putting on airs. If you're from the South, you know what that means. Um, and get a little comfortable because I want you all to feel comfortable enough to believe that this is just another tool in your toolkit and serving those who have served this country and the families that support them. Um, I wanna thank everybody who has helped put this together, particularly my, my right arm, my, my right hand and my partner in service, Julia Taval. And you will hear um, from her shortly uh, as we progress through this webinar. 
So with that being said, uh, it is an honor for me to introduce to you all our incredible CEO of AmeriCorps, Michael Smith. He is also not new to this. He's true to this. He is not just a person sitting in the seat, but he's an AmeriCorps alumni. He served in past administrations and has dedicated his entire life to public service, national service, community service, and volunteerism. So with that being said, it is an honor to introduce my leader and CEO, Michael Smith. Mary, thanks so much for that kind introduction and for your lifetime uh, commitment to service. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Uh, thank you so much for your participation uh, and for joining today's call, today's forum. Um, for those of you who are current AmeriCorps partners, I want to take a moment to thank you uh, for helping us build better, stronger partnerships with veterans and military families across America. And for others who are not yet partners of ours, thank you for joining us for this conversation. We hope to earn your partnership in the years to come. Uh, as a federal agency, we understand our sacred obligation to the military community. And in the words of, of my boss, President Biden, our nation cannot live up to its promise without caring for veterans and their families after they return home. And AmeriCorps plays a key role in helping us live up to this promise by making our resources available for national service and volunteerism across this country. So a part of this goal, a critical part of our work that you'll hear more about today includes strengthening our partnership with military connected communities. Uh, in fact, uh, at AmeriCorps, we're committing to several vital goals that impact veteran and military families. And I'll, I'll share some of those with you. One, uh, we're connecting veterans to critical wellness and support services, such as legal assistance, healthcare, jobs, training, affordable housing, uh, and mental health services. Second, uh, we're providing independent living services for older veterans. And third, uh, we're working to reduce the rate of veterans experiencing homelessness, which is so incredibly important. It's also uh, important to note that veterans who served in AmeriCorps and AmeriCorps seniors gain valuable professional, educational, and life benefits. Uh, and that experience we're seeing can have a lasting impact. In fact, 20,000 veterans served in AmeriCorps, serve in AmeriCorps each year. Uh, and AmeriCorps has supported 500,000 veterans and military families through our various programs. So I am so proud of the work that our teams have done over this past year. Uh, and I'm excited to hear more from you I actually am excited for you to hear more about these efforts and to hear more from you about how we can better be better partners. Uh, senior members of my team who are also in this meeting today are dedicated to partnering and collaborating with you. Uh, but we need your insight and support. We are eager to listen and hear directly from you. Um, we need you to help us think through questions like, what are the best ways to partner with you? What are the potential opportunities and challenges that we might be overlooking? What should or does the road ahead look like? And so again, I am truly grateful for your time. I am thankful for the opportunity to be here with you. Uh, so now allow me to turn it back over to our indefatigable veterans and military leader, uh, Mary Tobin, our senior advisor for Wounded Warrior Veteran and Military Family Initiatives. Uh, Mary, back to you. Thank you so much, Michael, for that. Um, you know what I, I love about our CEO, everybody? Is he gonna give you the data and the stats um, that, that you know, really hit home the impact that we are making every single day and every year uh, all across this country. Um, I, I'm gonna brag in between each of the introductions. Just, you all, just so you all know, um, we have one of those amazing leaders that Michael just mentioned uh, by the name of Rob Levis on this call. And Julia Taval is going to tell you a little bit more about the programs that we have in AmeriCorps. Um, but he is a leader in one of our programs called NCCC. And just a few weeks ago, um, he and his team, his incredible AmeriCorps members, just supported the National Wheelchair Games. And in 10 days, he and his members and his volunteers put in over 3,400 hours of volunteerism supporting those who are participating in the National Wheelchair Games. That's just 10 hours. And I know that there are those of you out there who are doing similar work just like that. First of all, I want to connect you to funding opportunities to help you scale the work that you're already doing. Do that in AmeriCorps. Second of all, I want to make sure that you're being recognized for the work that you're doing. Just so happens that AmeriCorps 
is the agency in charge of giving out the president's volunteer service awards. I'm telling you, there's a lot of benefits to being a part of this family. And I'm gonna be bragging on these folks throughout the uh, webinar today. So with that being said, it is also my privilege to introduce uh, to you all my partner in service, Julia Tavald, who's our, one of our amazing special assistants here at AmeriCorps. And she's also an incredible military spouse of a Marine Corps veteran. I will not hold that against her since I was a part of the greatest army this world has ever seen. With that being said, Julia, come on and then introduce yourself to everyone. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate that. Um, I won't waste more time with introductions. I think Mary did a great job. I know you promised that we are getting right to it. So I will. Um, I'll give a brief overview of AmeriCorps' work in this space. Um, and for those of you who are brand new to this conversation, I encourage you to visit AmeriCorps.gov, maybe even while I'm talking, for many more details about the things I'm going to touch on. There's a lot of information to cover, and we won't get to it all today, but we'll send all types of helpful links and resources to you after this call. And as Mary mentioned, don't forget about the chat function um, and the Q&A function, and we'll get to as many of your questions as we can today as well. Well, um, so here at AmeriCorps, veterans and military families are one of our six focus areas. So that means that every funding opportunity that AmeriCorps offers specifically names veterans and military families as a priority. So if you're on this call because your organization serves veterans, you should absolutely be checking our funding opportunities throughout the year. Um, and not only do we serve veterans and military families, we also serve with them. As Michael noted, we about 20,000 veterans serve in AmeriCorps programs every single year. We have four main programs. Um, each of them offer various time commitments, benefits, and requirements that can fit any stage of life as long as you're at least 17 years old. Um, we have military kids serving in NCCC right out of high school. We have military spouses serving as AmeriCorps VISTAs. And we have many incredible retired veterans serving with AmeriCorps seniors. Um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, today, we're gonna highlight a few specific opportunities that we think are great fits for this group and are available right now. So you don't have to wait for more updates or details. You can go to AmeriCorps.gov and get started on any of these items this minute. Um, so first, money which I hope got your attention. Um, the Volunteer Generation Fund is a fantastic opportunity for organizations that need capital to support their volunteer infrastructure. So this year's focus is on students and education. It's education. It's in alignment with the president's national partnership for student success, but that does not preclude non-education focused organizations from applying for funding and receiving funding. Um, so the deadline to apply for the Volunteer Generation Fund is mid-September. Definitely check that out on the AmeriCorps website. Uh, second, people power. This is what AmeriCorps is known for. If your organization needs more people to get stuff done, we can help. Uh, we're currently accepting applications to sponsor NCCC teams. That includes traditional teams, disaster response teams, and FEMA Corps teams. These are awesome groups of 18 to 24 year olds who are ready to deploy where they're needed across the country. So check that out as well. Third, recruitment. There are open AmeriCorps member and volunteer positions throughout the country, and we want to fill them with veterans and military family members. And that's not just because these folks are exceptional volunteers and teammates. It's because we know that volunteerism benefits veterans themselves in a multitude of ways. It's shown to positively impact mental health. It provides a new sense of mission and purpose. And oftentimes it also provides career training and pathways to employment. So all of our programs are recruiting members. We love all of our programs equally, of course, but we are especially excited right now for Public Health AmeriCorps. It's our newest program. It's a partnership with the CDC, and the goal is to develop the next generation of public health leaders. So our inaugural cohort of Public Health AmeriCorps grantees is recruiting members right now all across the country. These are very cool positions with very real pathways to employment. So please help us spread the word about Public Health AmeriCorps to the veteran community. We think it's a very um, no-brainer fit for a lot of folks who are transitioning out of service, especially. Um, and side note, if you're interested in becoming a Public Health AmeriCorps grantee yourself, keep your eyes peeled on our website. Um, details on the next round of funding should be announced next month. And last but not least, 
Another fun fact about AmeriCorps is that we are the federal agency tasked with implementing national days of service. So there are a few of those, including Martin Luther King Jr. Day and 9-11 Day or Patriot Day, which of course is coming up. So if your organization is planning a volunteer activation in honor of 9-11, uh, please register with AmeriCorps. You can do that on our website and that will help publicize your opportunity to more potential volunteers. It'll also help us count your volunteer hours um, to report out on the National Day of Service activation. Um, if you don't already have plans to serve, you can also visit AmeriCorps website and use our volunteer search tool to find an opportunity near you. And we actually have an upcoming webinar that's specifically dedicated to 9-11 Day. So we'll send you details about that after the call as well. So that was a lot. Um, again, don't be shy about using the chat function to ask your questions. We just wanted to give a brief rundown to those of you who are not yet officially um, AmeriCorps grantees or sponsors or project partners. Um, as Mary said, a lot of you on this call are, you're already in the family officially, um, and you've expressed interest in working more closely with veterans and their families, which is fantastic, and we're so happy that you're here. Um, and we think that the best place to get started is your local VA. So that leads us to our next speaker. I would like to introduce our partner from the VA's Center for Development and Civic Engagement, CDCE for short. Uh, Nate Witt is a voluntary services specialist and he has graciously offered to talk to us about how CDCE can help us locally. So Nate, thank you so much again for being here and I will turn it over to you. Thank you, Julia, really, uh, thank you so much. It's uh, really a great opportunity for us to speak to you just a few minutes uh, during this round table about the VA Center for Development and Civic Engagement and really the work we're privileged to do in partnership with great organizations such as AmeriCorps. Um, next slide, please. For those attending unaware, the VA Center for Development and Civic Engagement, or CDCE, because we love our acronyms in the federal government, was formerly named VA Voluntary Service. And we're the arm of VA that's fortunate to work with volunteers, donors, and other strategic partners to really positively impact care and services that are delivered to our nation's heroes who receive those VA care and benefits. So because of those volunteers, donors, and partners, we really do have a rich history beginning just after World War II of a core of great organizations and individuals who served more than 800 million hours helping veterans. In January of last year, our program office had a name change to the VA Center for Development and Civic Engagement to better reflect the fact that we have three business lines. And so I just wanted to briefly mention those voluntary service, which is really our proud history and our foundation, partnership, partnership solutions that speaks to the impact we make through our partners and is a, really a recognition that no one of us is as good as all of us when we seek to make a difference. And then philanthropic engagement that really speaks to our relationships with those who provide monetary and non-monetary dona donations to VA. Next slide, please. I'd be remiss in today's day and age if I didn't uh, note the impact that the pandemic has made on CDC, our volunteers, donors, and strategic partners that we work with. And my quick comments will reflect that impact. Next slide. Uh, despite the pandemic though, I wanna give you an idea of the data connected with CDCE programming across the VA enterprise with more than 25,000 volunteers last fiscal year who serve nearly 2.6 million volunteer hours. Additionally, donors who through CDC contributed more than $101 million to support veterans served by VA. We're really in that period of rebuilding and we're doing it with the foundational concept that more is not necessarily better, that better is better. And our director, Dr. Sabrina Clark within the Center for Development and Civic Engagement truly wants to invite all of you as current and potential AmeriCorps grantees, uh, sponsors, partners, and others interested in serving the veteran community to really join us in that mission as we do go through a rebuild. Next slide, please. Listed here are various volunteer assignments and there are many more as what we seek to do is uh, really find out what an individual or organization is uniquely equipped, um, how you're uniquely equipped to serve veterans and then place you in a volunteer assignment in your areas of interest and strength. Next slide. 
just to highlight a couple of partnerships that have grown into what we believe are really incredible volunteer assignments and donation opportunities. I'll briefly mention something called the Compassionate Contact Corps, and then also some food pantries and sometimes food banks within our VA medical centers. Compassionate Contact Corps grew out of a need um, during the pandemic where care providers were letting us uh, within the Center for Development and Civic Engagement know that we have veterans who are socially isolated and because they're attending their medical appointments through virtual modalities, they really are seeking opportunities to interact with people. So our volunteers stepped up once again through Compassionate Contact Corps and made phone and video calls to these veterans who were referred by their clinical provider, really to combat that social isolation. Feedback from veterans, care providers has really been tremendous. And, and uh, we invite all of you uh, to partner with us uh, in that great program. Additionally, food pantries, I won't say too much here. I think um, we often, all of us hear that no veteran uh, should be homeless. No veteran should face food insecurity. And that really is an initiative that through the Center for Development and Civic Engagement, in partnership with our social work service, nutrition and food service and others, we're really looking to make an impact through the great organizations like AmeriCorps that we're privileged to work with. Next slide. Here we just focus on gifts and donations um, through the generosity of more than 7,400 national and community partnerships, uh, 55 of those uh, of which serve on a congressionally chartered VA Voluntary Service National Advisory Committee. I'll note that uh, one of those 55 is none other than AmeriCorps. And um, through those, we really get feedback about how we can continue to improve the volunteer, donor, strategic partner programming that we have. Those monetary and non-monetary donations supports the comfort and welfare of veterans and, and veteran caregivers and their family members. Next slide. Very briefly, want to note the typical process by which an individual or organization becomes involved in volunteering with VA through that application interview, orientation, simple background check, badging, and training. Most importantly here, though, is a link that uh, can be used to connect to the VA Medical Center uh, that's closest to you and uh, speak to the Center for Development and Civic Engagement, CDCE office, so that we can talk to you about um, how our missions interrelate and how we can work with you to best serve veterans. Next slide. As noted uh, multiple times, there's also opportunities to serve veterans through donations to your local VA medical center. And those within the local CDC office, again, can speak to you or your organization, how to ensure your potential gift can make the greatest impact um, on our nation's heroes. And last slide, please. Here is just my email address. And if you have any questions not addressed during Q&A time today, um, happy to um, connect with you at any point. Also, it, here is that link where you can connect to your local VA Medical Center, Center for Development and Civic Engagement. Uh, really appreciate the time uh, to connect with you all today. Thank you so much to AmeriCorps for including us in the, the roundtable discussion today. And much more importantly, we appreciate everything that uh, you, AmeriCorps, and all of you out there do in service to those veterans that we're honored to serve. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much, Nate, for coming on board and presenting that. I'm sure that folks are going to have a a bunch of questions for you. And thank you so much for presenting the ways in which people can volunteer and connect with local VA clinics. Um, what Nate didn't say is that, you know, um, being a part of this incredible network also connects you to announcements about funding opportunities. And as a former nonprofit executive director, I know you're always hustling for money. Got to get the money so you can serve as many people as you can. So you want to be connected so you can hear those ways in which you can get money to do the good work and continue to doing the, do, doing the good work that you're doing um, in, in your local community. So I just wanna say that, and particularly those who are working in the mental health and wellness space, um, the, the Department of VA uh, has announced and is announcing on, on I've seen um, almost yearly ways to uh, apply for funding opportunities to continue doing that work and serving veterans. Um, who have need of mental health and wellness resources. So ask those questions during the Q&A session. Uh, with that being said, I want to 
uh, introduce uh, two of our incredible partners, and I, I mentioned uh, their work earlier uh, by the name of Mary Van Verst and Jeremy Grisham, and they are out of our Washington State Department of Veteran Affairs partnership um, with AmeriCorps, and they work in the counseling and wellness programs, and that they do all the things. Um, and I just want you all to hear about the amazing ways and creative ways and innovative ways that they are serving the veterans community and write down all the questions that you have for them, because I need for everybody to do something like this wherever you are. So with that being said, I'm going to be quiet now and pass this to you, Mary, and thank you so much for honoring us with your presence. Mary, thank you so much to you and to Julia for inviting us to be part of this special forum today. I am proud to say that Serve Washington, for which I work, the State Commission for National and Community Service in Washington State, has partnered with the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs since 2009 to host the first VetCorp. AmeriCorps program in the state of Washington and the nation. And VetCorps has been able to help other states launch VetCorps programs as well. To tell you about the program today, I'm pleased to introduce Jeremy Grisham, who is the Director of Counseling and Wellness Programs at the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs. Jeremy has longevity with the department and with the VetCorps program and he is deeply committed to the health and wellness of veterans and military families. We look forward to your presentation, Jeremy. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Mary. And um, thank you, Mary and everyone for your time this morning. Um, we're grateful to be here and to speak on behalf of uh, our work, the VetCorps program. Uh, my name is Jeremy Grisham. I am a 12 year uh, medically retired Navy hospital foreman, uh, served mostly with Marine Corps units out of Camp Pendleton. Um, and after my discharge from Naval Service, I uh, became a, a volunteer through a program called the Veterans Conservation Corps, also with the Counseling and Wellness Programs at the WBBA, um, which then I became a contractor and then an employee. Um, and in that time, I'm, I've had the privilege to, one, um, you know, be a part of the Vet Corps program since its beginning in 2009, made possible from the um, Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act. Um, and those were fun days because uh, we had no idea what we were doing. Um, and we, made, we uh, made a lot of progress in identifying the first 10 schools and then the first 10 um, veterans to participate in this program. Um, and I think that one of the true measures of the success of the program is in um, evaluating what those early members have done since then. And they've gone on to do some amazing things in nonprofit work, at uh, colleges and universities, um, and also with, with government jobs. So it's just been really, it's been a great pleasure to watch them um, involved in the program. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so today I'm just going to give you a brief overview of, of what the Vet Corps program is uh, through the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs. Um, also talking about uh, you know, what we do, um, what this year's training will look like, and kind of the hope for our trainings uh, moving forward. Uh, some recruiting um, efforts that we're making at the moment, and um, and then answering questions. And that I guess that will happen at the Q and A section. Um, next slide, please. So what does the Vet Corps program do? Well, the Washington State Department of Veterans Affairs Vet Corps program is, is funded by AmeriCorps. Um, it, again, it started in 2009 as part of the Edward M. Kennedy Serve America Act. Um, Vet Corps members are tasked with working with veterans and family members to aid in transition from military service and build community through service. And I think this is one of the most important aspects of, you know, one of the, the aspects of an AmeriCorps model that I really appreciate is how important service learning is for veterans who are transitioning from military service. In a way, it helps identify a second mission, helps connect people to community, which I think is, is most, important, uh, most important, especially if they're dealing with transition issues or, and or internal external pressures from injury and illness. Um, so it's been really effective in that regard to connecting people to community and also um, improving their skill sets. 
Um, in addition, we answer specific questions or concerns um, individual student veterans may have as they transition and assist the service member and veteran and family communities um, in connecting them to federal, state, and local veteran benefits. Additionally, VetCorps uh, Vet members provide training, uh, or sorry, additionally, VetCorps <laughs> provides training to support the faculty, staff, administration, and community members to increase awareness of veterans' needs. And this is in addition to the service projects that happen um, throughout the year. Um, and right now we have uh, member sites located at colleges, universities, and nonprofit organizations across the state. Um, we grew from 10 in 2009 to 50, um, which has been our number for um, uh, many years. The program is specifically designed to help veterans and their family members navigate through, uh, navigate their journey as they transition from military uh, service to civilian colleges and, you know, their life um, post military. Next slide, please. Through training and peer-to-peer -peer support, VetCorps members support student veterans, veterans in the community and military families by building on shared experiences and creating supportive relationships. This invaluable assistance in turn provides veterans with information about services available um, or assist veterans with navigating processes that can um, feel overwhelming to navigate on their own. So one of the, the challenges that many student veterans face is this sense of not being able to fit in, in part because uh, you know, for many veterans who are older, um, uh, young adults or older in, in their, uh, as adult learners, it's hard for them to relate to uh, younger student populations. And so the VetCorps uh, program helps connect veterans to uh, community that they identify with, that they feel comfortable with, helps them connect to new communities, um, and um, helps them uh, mitigate uh, the pressures that they're experiencing, whether it's external or internal, if there's family issues or you know, financial uh, challenges or whatever it might be. The role of the VetCorps member depends in part on the needs and existing resources for veterans at their site. For example, they may play a larger role in assisting student veterans in obtaining financial aid on campuses that do not have veteran centers or staff dedicated to addressing financial need of student veterans. At sites where those services already exist, the VetCorps member assumes different roles. VetCorps members are supported um, by and accountable to their site supervisor and regional coordinator. So what we're looking at is a program that is highly adaptable to meet the, the needs of the individual. Um, and we are connected to the community in ways that um, are meaningful regionally, if that makes sense. So each school is gonna have a different uh, focus um, for their student veterans or each nonprofit and um, our members adapt to, to those needs. And there's a couple things I'd like to mention really quick about, um, uh, well, this, I guess the, the schools. Um, and that is, uh, and now I've lost track of what I was going to say, but um, I, I'll come back to it. It'll, it'll come back to me. Um, I'll remember, I'll bring it back. Sorry. Uh, next, next slide, please. Okay, so for VetCorp trainings, um, one of our primary goals for VetCorp trainings is to certify each VetCorp member um, as a uh, certified peer counselor in Washington State, which would help, um, one, it's recognized as a, a, a certification that's uh, translatable for, for jobs, usually in community mental health, um, and also it helps uh, provide them with the skills necessary to um, help mitigate the complexities of the human condition, um, especially as it relates to what the veteran um, military member uh, or service member, the veteran and family members might experience. Uh, so with that said, usually on, on um, in our training, so this year is gonna be a little bit different because we're gonna have one day dedicated strictly to, to the vet corps uh, members. And then we're partnering um, this training with the Serve Those Who Serve conference that, that will be held in Wenatchee, Washington um, on August 24th, 25th, 26th, um, to give the VET Corps members a little bit of leverage in um, you know, tailoring what, what their beginning of the year training looks like. And some of the topics uh, that they'll experience, especially on day one, is a military sexual trauma, 
um, military cultural engagement, uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, um, followed by post-traumatic growth, helping to introduce these ideas um, and dispel stigmas and biases and that sort of thing. Um, an ethics course, uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion, belonging, uh, peer mentor skill building, brain injury. Um, also, it's not, it used to be uh, focused on traumatic brain injury, but we're switching that to really focus on brain injury and recovery. So we understand what the, uh, where, where the, what the injury is, understand how that impacts the individual, and then start working towards solutions towards recovery um, as a strength-based model. Um, uh, veteran benefits, veteran learn, uh, the learn training for suicide prevention, uh, goal setting, self-care, service projects, and the vet corps portal. So getting some of those nuts and bolts out of the way. And then again, with the serving those who serve conference, there's going to be a whole collection of different um, focuses, such as homelessness or in, again, self-care and that sort of thing. Some of the trainings that we offer uh, are required. Uh, next slide, please. Um, always kind of use a jump ahead. Um, so some of the uh, topics are required, such as, such as the peer mentor skills building course that I, that I discussed, uh, PTSD and post-traumatic growth, um, learn suicide prevention training, and then the military sexual training. Next slide, please. Currently, we have uh, 50 sites who have applied uh, for vet corps members, and we are a little bit over halfway there in recruiting new veterans for these schools um, and um, nonprofits. Um, with 32 having applied to date. So it's something that we're working on. Um, and in one, some of the ways that we're doing that is through outreach, individual contacts, word of mouth, and advertising to recruit more members. Um, this year has been a little bit more challenging in, in, um, in identifying new members, uh, but we're, we feel confident that um, we'll be able, to be able to meet the demand. Next slide, please. Okay, uh, that would be the end of this presentation. Down and dirty, uh, my name is Jeremy Grisham. I'm a licensed counselor in Washington State. Um, I am the director of the Council of Women's Programs with the your State Department of Veterans Affairs. And um, please feel free to email me or go to our website for more information. I'm happy to answer any questions you have. And, and uh, yeah, please feel free to reach out as you like. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Jeremy. And um, I hope you can see the Q&A boxes. Folks have questions for you. So uh, if you can go in there and start answering those. And thank you for your service. I learned so much when I um, heard about the incredible things that this, that your particular team and the entire team in the state of Washington is doing to support veterans. And I'm sure that folks on this call may know um, unfortunately, about the veterans homelessness challenges that are happening there. And this team is on the front line working to support that. So if that is something that you would like to get involved with, you would like to know more about how they're doing it and how AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps can better help you support that, that work. He's the man to talk to. Mary's the person to talk to. And we are the agency for you to partner with. And speaking of agencies, um, it is now a great honor for me to introduce our next presenter um, by the name of Jimmy Anderson. He is the now current Director of Veterans Engagement at the White House. Um, so I, I, I always um, do this mode right here when he comes on, on screen um, because he is working to support our veterans and our military family members at the highest office of the land. And I'm honored to know him and to partner with him. Uh, hasn't been in this role that long, but let me tell you, he has done damage in a good way in a very short time. And I'm so proud to serve along you, Jimmy, a fellow veteran as well. So with that being said, I'll go on mute and let you present to our, our amazing community here. Well, Mary, first, thank you uh, for that. And I hope everyone can hear me good on, on comms. So maybe I can get a good a thumbs up, Mary, from you. All right, that's great, great. Okay, so, uh, you know, as Mary said, my name is Jimmy Anderson. I'm currently uh, the Director of Veteran Engagement in the White House's Office of Public Engagement. I'm a 13 year force veteran uh, and I continue to serve to this day. So I'm still a serving uh, reservist, a part timer now. Uh, so for all my Air Force uh, folks out there, uh, aim high, fly fighting. Yeah, yeah. So let's let's do that first. Um, yeah. Secondly, to, to, to what we're gonna talk about, 
uh, today. I believe I have about five minutes or so. Uh, I just want to say uh, good afternoon to all of you, um, veteran service organizations, military service organizations, uh, military families, uh, survivors, uh, and veteran connected partners along this very large ecosystem. Um, for those who are unaware of yeah. the Office of Public Engagement, uh, this office supports the president's goal of building a government that is inclusive, transparent, accountable, and responsible to its citizens. Uh, we, our whole goal is to create direct dialogue between the Biden-Harris administration and the American public. Uh, so we work with community leaders, diverse perspectives. We try to bring in new, new voices, uh, which all have the opportunity to inform the work of the president. Uh, as many of you all have know, know and probably have seen is that President Biden believes we have a sacred obligation to support veterans, their families, caregivers, and survivors. Uh, and he believes we must do these things to unite the country. Uh, this is deeply personal to the president uh, and the vice president and uniting Americans for veterans has broad bipartisan support, right? Uh, this is why as part of his first state of the union address, he identified supporting veterans as a key pillar of his unity agenda. Uh, the president remains committed, uh, firstly, to addressing uh, the adverse health effects. And then that's what I kind of want to center uh, our conversation around, um, which is uh, toxic exposures. Many of you all may have seen it in the news, uh, heard about it from a friend, uh, or uh, heard about it from another uh, part of the organization. The president is committed to addressing adverse health effects for military environmental exposures, yeah. especially uh, the yeah. adverse impacts yeah. Yeah. Uh, of burn pits to our, uh, on our nation's yeah. yeah. Uh For months, President Biden has called on Congress to help deliver the benefits and healthcare services that veterans impacted by toxic exposures have earned, while also through Secretary McDonough's leadership at VA, taking steps where we can to add new presumptives uh, for rare illnesses experienced uh, through toxic exposures, where the evidence warrants. Uh, this legislation, if you haven't seen it, this legislation has the ability to uh, bring up to 3.5 million more veterans into VA care. Uh, and the PACT Act would be one of the largest substantive um, uh, health and benefit expansions in VA's history. It's very comparable to uh, the Agent Orange Act. If, if for the folks familiar with that. Uh, the PACT Act will not only help deliver more timely access to benefits and services for veterans and their survivors, it will also ensure that the Department of Veterans Affairs can act more nimbly to add future presumptive conditions when the evidence warrants. And so this is something that we've been laser focused on. Many of you all on the call have, have aided, uh, whether it's on the legislative side, whether it's on the uh, figuring out what implementation looks like on the policy side, um, we, we have been laser focused on getting pass act, uh, the PACT Act passed, uh, and we are very close. We got it uh, passed. Um, we had a, a Senate uh, bipartisan deal on the PACT Act. Uh, then we got it passed, but we had to run it back through um, to do some legislative fixes, as many yeah, of you on this so call probably already know about. Uh, but, but we are um, anticipating something um, soon uh, to to uh, I'm working very closely uh, with Congress to uh, to pass the PACT Act. Um, uh, so some of the other things that I think we're, we're kind of focused on uh, right now, which is when I look at the veteran experience and engagement um, with our BSOs, military service organizations, nonprofits, so on and so forth, um, I think that, you know, there are veteran-centric uh, there's veteran secret work that we're doing uh, as, as it pertains to like addressing toxic exposures, but there are also other, you know, bigger administration things that happen. And of course, as veterans, we, we are also uh, impacted by that. So uh, some of the, some of the things that we've, we've been seeing over the last at least week or two, uh, we've seen private sector jobs uh, now fully recovered from the pandemic. Uh, our private sector has now recovered all the jobs lost during the pandemic and added jobs on top of that. And so we are now seeing the fastest and strongest jobs recovery in American history. And it would not have been possible without the decisive action of the Biden administration and Democrats in Congress uh, who took last year to fix a, uh, and, and to uh, work on a COVID response uh, for, for the American public. Uh, through the American Rescue Plan. Uh, uh, there are other, you know, high, 
interest items around climate. Uh, as more than 100 million Americans are grappling with extreme heat, uh, even this week, it's clear that action on climate change is more uh, urgent than ever. Uh, the president uh, is, is prepared to reiterate that climate change is an existential threat to our nation and to the world. Uh, and uh, he will make clear um, uh, that he's going to work with Congress um, uh, to, to make good on that. Um, uh, the president's also going to take additional actions uh, to secure a clean energy future, whether it's uh, creating good paying jobs and lowering the cost for families, boosting domestic offshore uh, wind in industry, and uh, protecting communities who are facing extreme heat. Uh, lastly, uh, and, and then I will open it up to, to you all, um, because I can't see the chat. I meant to tell Mary that, uh, but, but we have also seen as of early last week, uh, we did see the most significant uh, gun violence legislation in the last 30 years, uh, which was um, signed uh, by the president last, and this happened last week. Members of victims, advocates, and elected officials celebrated the passage of the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Uh, again, a bipartisan uh, piece of legislation, um, and it is the most significant gun violence uh, reduction legislation in the last 30 years. Uh, so, so these are some of the things that I think are, are uh, that touch the, the veteran experience and, and are also important to highlight. Uh, there's work that we have ahead um, in the veteran-centric uh, areas as well. But what I'm really interested to hear is uh, what you all are doing. Um, uh, so I would like to open it up to the group, see what you all are working on, thinking through, uh, and, and also thinking through some ways that we can work together uh, in ways that I can uh, help. Thank you, Mary. Thank you so much, Jimmy. For uh, You are a busy gentleman, so we really appreciate you taking out the time. And I hope everybody really heard the emphasis on um, the important legislation that has been recently passed that impacts this particular community, especially the PACT Act. If you haven't read up on it, please do. That will open up a lot more resources to the veterans and military family members that you all are currently serving or desire to serve. So with that being said, here is the best part of this entire um, time together today. And we can definitely start out with any questions that you might have for Jimmy, while he is still with us, you all have been flooding the Q&A box with questions and I hope we've been answering to your satisfaction. Um, but if you would, if you have a question that you wanna ask right now, um, if you could use the raise hand function at the, at the bottom um, level of your screen and you can see it is right to the right of the share screen function. You might not have the share screen function or the chat and raise your hand or continue to put things in the Q&A. Um, and so, Julia, I'm going to ask that you also come on screen and help me um, feel this as well. And I know that I'm here with uh, Adrian and Rob and um, all the rest of the team who will help answer questions that folks might have. So don't be shy, everyone. I know this community is not shy. Y'all call me and email me every day. You are not shy. Uh, <laughs> so uh, do we see any raised hands, Julia? I do not see any raised hands currently. Oh, that's amazing. That means that Mary, we did a fantastic job. Go ahead, Jimmy. <laughs> and Mary, what I'll say is for any things in the chat that I, you know, can't see, uh, for any things that that I could, you know, be helpful to yeah. to um, answer, whether it's on our policy team, because obviously we we work, you know, hand in hand with multiple cross multiple teams, right? The whole teaming approach. Um, so whether it's a, a policy team question or a legislative question, I'll be I can happily traffic cop these things around um, to make sure that you get the actual you know answer the latest uh, answer. Absolutely, Jimmy. I saw a question. This is <laughs> who is in charge of White House tours? How can we get veterans and their military family members into that uh, historic building to see uh, where the seat of democracy resides? Yeah, so you know, we we really took a, a phased approach into opening back up uh, the doors, right? And so many of you all may have seen a very recent release um, saying that you know White House tours are, are back on, right? And, and that they're we're, we're projecting to open back up really fall, right? So we're we're getting close because it's July twentieth, and I can't believe it's July twentieth. Uh, but but um, the the main source I think for tours. 
uh, for for our stakeholders would be uh, maybe working through Mary to to, to batch up some names um, to send over to me, and then um, because we're we're you know my my job is outreach and engagement, right? So uh, so we we work very closely with our visitors office to ensure that we're getting um, our our stakeholders, their families um, into into um, uh, to tour the uh, the East one. So you all heard that flood me with names, right. I, I, and I'm a witness that Jimmy does. He's a man of his word, and he works his best. He works his hardest to get folks in. He's done that with a few of our AmeriCorps veterans and their families already, um, especially around the Memorial Day time frame. So this is not just one of those pitches. Jimmy is really committed to the the engagement piece as well. I see two hands raised. Um, Sharon from Sharon Newcomb, if you could. Um, come off of mute and ask your question. Okay, if you can hear me now, I'm actually sitting in the Warrior Way Wellness Center in Williamsburg, Virginia, that we set up January 5th of 2020. And everything that is listed on both what I'm as well as what Jimmy has been saying, we've been modeling this prototype for the last two years. I think one of the things about the community collaborations, and I have obviously been listed on VA, faith-based and community and AmeriCorps site, is how can we specifically work together with memorandums of understanding or exchange or actually do team building across the country to be able to connect Sharon, I think we might have lost you. Um, and we were just getting to the good part too. Okay. So I don't, yeah, go for it. We can hear you again, yeah. Okay, it must have just been a drop signal. Wherever I was, what I was saying is we've been operating this uh, prototype for two years now. I actually work for SAMHSA for, as their technical advisor and adjunct faculty nationwide uh, for several years for a service member veterans families and with faith-based and community organizations so it was one of the leading you know the things that I wanted to do was to actually establish this prototype two years ago so what I was saying is being able to connect what we're all doing and come up with more of a building coalition and sharing and memorandums of understanding how can we actually connect this in a more comprehensive way to assist nationwide in, in sharing our resources and doing what we're doing. I, I can jump in first, Mary. Um, I think that's a great question. And those are questions that we are um, talking about on the headquarters level. So our program directors through Public Health AmeriCorps and AmeriCorps seniors specifically are in conversations with SAMHSA. Um, and I think those are the making those connections and the, you know, developing that wider ecosystem is exactly what we are working through right now. Um, so we will certainly keep this group posted of what comes out of those conversations. That was a great answer, Julia. That's why you work for AmeriCorps. <laughs> uh, it's funny because I was just going to toss that to Jimmy. She said nationwide, and I just assumed that the White House um, answers that. No, I'm kidding. No, we 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 really are. Um, I think that's why we it was important that we had our partners in the VA here um, on board with all of the incredible things that are happening around mental health and wellness resources. Um, AmeriCorps sits on the Usage Council, which is the U.S. Inter Interagency Council on Homelessness. We're talking about ways to support usage and HUD around the point in time count, particularly targeting, um, understanding what our homeless veterans or our veterans who are experiencing homelessness are, are currently going through, and how to better support them. And so we are looking at ways to bring this um, to a national level and then bring all of you all and our current grantees and our potential, our future grantees together to support that work. Um, it's, it's, I'm trying to stop using military terms, but it's like maximum effective power on a particular issue, right? And, and, and making that impact. Um, so yeah, we hear you. And these are not just fluff words. These, this stuff is in play. We're having meetings 
um, this week, I think, on, on what you just asked. So um, part of why this roundtable was so important is because you're now a part of our database. You'll get this information. We will send this out to all of you so that you know and you have these opportunities to get involved ASAP. Um, so I, 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 if, you, if you know me personally, you'll know that um, I, I don't blow smoke at all. Um, I come from the South and my mama would get me if I did. So, uh, so I, I wanna only say things that are true and are, and are currently happening. Um, and, and you all will get um, my contact information here um, in a minute or so, so you'll know how to reach out. Um, Lou um, Murray, I see your hand as well. You can go ahead and come off a of, of mute, Lou. Yeah, can you hear me? Yep, can hear you now. Yeah, okay, I'm from uh, the Sarasota, Florida area, and I'm over the uh, food council for this area. Uh, we're looking at putting together uh, drum circles. We have drum circles here in Florida, especially on our beaches and things. And we're trying to put together a, a drum circle for uh, minority veterans. Uh, after all veterans would be welcome, but we, we're emphasizing minority veterans uh, that have other uh, social issues that need to be dealt with and also uh, just create a, a drum circle with that that would bring uh, minority veterans into uh, uh, the, the VA uh, programs and stuff and now uh, the uh, drum circle has already been proven by the VA as a very uh, good tool in terms of post-matic stress uh, disorder um, uh, for them to play the drum, you know, we call drum circles. It, it, it's good therapy for them. It's already been proven. And I was just wondering, how can we get support from you, uh, from this organization, Ameritech, uh, volunteers, whoever, uh, to, uh, to be able to uh, uh, develop this program? And we're thinking about having them in our community-based farmers markets and community gardens. Absolutely. So first of all, Lou, thank you so much for the service that you already give um, in the community, period. And by the way, I'm going to be at now vet with post-matic stress. <laughs> so now, now I got to really pause. Thank you for your service. Um, and thank you for continuing to serve, despite the fact that you didn't get the welcome that I got when I came back. So I thank you so much for your continued dedication and love for this country. And with that being said, um, I would like, Steve, if you could, to put my our contact information, that slide up, um, because I would like for you to reach out ASAP. Um, between our partners at the VA, um, Rob has just talked about it from NCCC, and I'm definitely going to get uh, our, our amazing Director of Veterans Engagement at the White House involved. We would love to bring this initiative to more than just the folks in the communities that you are serving. I think it's one of those things that we can we can definitely help you scale. And let's talk about it. Get on my calendar, make me do my job, and let's figure this out. And everybody's asking at this point for the contact information because we're at time. And I and if this went so fast, I think I actually enjoyed myself. This is the first webinar I've actually enjoyed. Um, uh, truly, <laughs> everyone else, I just, you know, do what I got to do, but I enjoy connecting with all of you. Please write this down, screenshot it, copy it, email us all the things and reach out to us to find out how we can get AmeriCorps to partner with you or how we can stretch out tentacles and you can partner with other federal agencies because we are a federal agency. Um, just so you know, Everyone who registered and everyone who participated, we will make sure that you get a recording of this so you don't have to remember all of this. Just remember AmeriCorps VMF at cns.gov and we'll get this information to you. If there's anybody here, you can't remember their name, but you want to connect, email this and we will make sure that you get connected to them. We are here to serve. We are to do good as other federal agency and we're very, very proud of it. Please connect with us. You don't have a choice. You're already a part of our family now. We're so grateful for your service. Thank you, Julia. Thank you, Rob, Adrian, Mary, Jeremy, Jimmy, Nate, uh, Michael in his absence for sure for participating in. And if I forgot your name, charge it to my head and not my heart. And thank you all for your continued service to our great country. 
Remember, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only love can do that. And service is love. And we appreciate everything that you do. With that being said, y'all have a great day. Thank you, everyone.